Hi, I'm Peter Parker. Hey, Peter Parker. You got something for me? I don't know how you're gonna get us through all of that. What's up, folks? Mike for CMCC Builds, and welcome back to part two of Tree and Monk vs. The Gauntlet. If you're asking yourself, what the heck is the gauntlet? Do yourself a favor and check out the intro video linked in the description. And then check out part one, and then, and only then, come back here and check out this bad boy. Map one of this gauntlet is always a doozy, so be sure not to skip it. For everyone else, like I said, welcome back. If you have interest in playing or DMing gauntlets, consider joining the gauntlet discord where people find games, attempt to beat this level 14 gauntlet, and gauntlets at a variety of levels that will be featured in upcoming videos. Speaking of which, after today's gauntlet run, we will see a straight class monk take on this level 14 gauntlet. Ooh, and another YouTube optimizer, friend of the channel. Between those runs will be the regularly scheduled programming, builds, D&D thoughts, maybe the return of some old classic series, we'll see. And finally, I want to give huge thank yous to my patron Douglas Reynolds and his fantastic support. Bearworks and Fake Fairy Tale for the wonderful maps. Oddfather for running the game. And Chris for taking a chance and giving this whole gauntlet thing a try. Lots of people can, and in fact did say no. Chris not only said yes, but he had multiple videos discussing his experience with the gauntlet. Most of you have seen it, but if not, give it a watch. Last we left off, the team had just entered the next chamber on the way to infiltrate the desecrated temple to prevent the Mind Flayer Arcanist from completing its ritual. Quasar has gone through all six first level slots, all three second level slots, two thirds, and two fourth level slots, but was able to get a short rest prior to entering this chamber, which means two first level warlock slots were recovered. At the first sound of danger, Quasar upcasts Spirit Guardians at fifth level. Now a quick point on Spirit Guardians here, as many of you saw in Chris's videos, that 10 minute in between encounters rule caught him off guard, to say the least. And to that point, yeah, conveying distance by time is a bit weird and doesn't jive with the actual travel pace rules. Right now, the official gauntlet rule is this. The distance between consecutive maps, except for between maps 4 and 5, is 3,000 feet, or 10 minutes at a normal travel pace. This can be reduced with speed boosts, a fast pace, teleportation magic, or other methods. If you want to say get more mileage out of a 10 minute buff, so Chris should have been able to travel at a fast pace to get another combat in with Spirit Guardians up. That said, two points to bring up. One, at a fast pace, that negative five penalty to perception may have been a surprise round for Team Monster, especially on this upcoming map. And two, DM Oddfather did allow Chris the opportunity to pre-cast Spirit Guardians on these encounters. Is that as good as just having it up already for the encounter? No, of course not. But not losing a round to cast it, especially when you're toward the bottom of the initiative order, is still kind of a big deal. There's absolutely no reason to believe that the characters will know when their next combat is going to occur, and as such, should not know when to precast spells, unless they're also willing to be wrong and waste precastings. So yes, the 10 minute rule sucked, but also that was balanced somewhat by guaranteed precastings. Let's do it. It's go time. Here, all sides fail their stealth checks and roll for initiative. The sidekicks continue their strong run of leading the pack with Quasar near the bottom, despite a solid 17. Round one. The expert kicks off the combat, but can't see a damn thing, so he readies a shortbow attack. The warrior makes a mad dash through the chamber, aggressively charging the first 30 feet, running another 30, and then dashing for a total of 85 feet of movement. The first Will-O-Wisp takes a crack at the orc standing in front of it. Invisible, it strikes with advantage and hits for three lightning damage. He reels back in anguish, shaking his hand from the carpet shock. Ouch! The next Wisp darts into the Spirit Guardians, failing its save and taking a massive 12 damage on a level 5 upcast. That's not a typo. But it is forced to make a concentration check on its invisibility, which it subsequently fails. As its light glows, it makes an attack without the benefit of advantage and misses the steed with a 12. The remaining wisps gravitate toward the cosmic swirl of radiant energy in the distance. And on cue, it's Quasar's turn. His steed gallops toward the exit, provoking an opportunity attack that misses. Pulling up in front of an invisible, but not hidden, poltergeist, Quasar fires off an Eldritch Blast at the wisp, guarding the path to the exit. A 20 hits for 12 damage. Not enough to kill the wisp, but Hadar pulls it into the Spirit Guardians, where it succeeds on its save, but still takes 11 damage. It's light, extinguished. Quasar then moves past the geist, who misses an opportunity attack. With the Geist just outside of the Spirit Guardians, Quasar takes a second shot, this time at disadvantage against the invisible target. Before we see the results of that roll, I know some people had issue with the movement in between the Eldritch Blasts, whether or not that's raw. I'm not going to discuss it here, but feel free to add your opinions in the comments below. 
Okay, back to the encounter. 18 hits for 12 damage, five of which are bludgeoning. That enables the first clause of the Crusher Feet to kick in, moving the Poltergeist into the Spirit Guardians, where it does make it save, allowing it to live, until the next Eldritch Blast that hits it with a 20 and deals 14 more damage. Dead. The Geists dart in toward the heroes. Three of the four make attacks, as line of sight can't be established for the fourth, but only one of those hits. It rips Quasar off his steed, inflicting eight bludgeoning damage as he smashes into the floor. Round two. At the top of the round, the roaming encounter makes an appearance. The assassin enters at 16 and the winter wolf at 7 in the initiative order, but more importantly, they impede the path of the escaping party. The expert takes a shot at the winter wolf, hitting for 8 damage. The lack of enemies within 30 feet means the expert is unable to use the helpful bonus action, which hinders both his companion's effectiveness and his own damage output. The will-o'-wisps whiz across the battlefield, dashing and repositioning themselves for the possibility of effective attacks in future rounds. The orc rushes over through the cosmic swirls using a bonus action aggressive feature to reach the nearest poltergeist, again invisible but not hidden. Two attacks, which should be at disadvantage, both hit, one a critical, and deal 30 damage eliminating the undead creature. Quasar's turn and he immediately switches up tactics, moving 15 feet, he then uses the remaining 15 feet of movement to mount his horse. The horse, able to move on the turn it's mounted, takes off in the opposite direction of the exit. It stops just shy of the spirit guardians, reaching the northernmost wisps, Three Eldritch Blasts, the first two miss due to disadvantage, but the third barely hits. 16 damage, 5 from bludgeoning, pulling the Wisp into the Spirits and shredding it to pieces. Quasar finishes his turn by pushing past the Wisps, extending the distance between him and the Assassin, who goes next. Seeing the element of surprise lost, and with little chance to gain a tactical advantage, the Assassin retreats from the encounter. He will wait for the most opportune time to strike. Poltergeists start their turn, both fail their saves, and both die. Thanks for coming. The final Geist moves closer to Quasar, attempting to telekinetically rip him off his steed, but fails the Charisma vs. Strength check. It then sinks into the ground, taking 9 damage. Round 3 The Expert can't see anyone, so it takes a shortbow shot at the nearest Wisp it can hear. A natural 1 and a natural 20, regression to the mean in real time. The Wisp's turn, and the first one, caught in the Galactic Swirl, dissipates into nothingness. The next moves into attack the Orc, but misses with a 15. The final wisp floats toward the intruders and hides. Nat 20 with a plus 9 modifier means it is indeed hidden. The warrior attacks the will o wisp in front of him and misses with both attacks. It's just not his day, folks. Quasar moves 5 feet toward the nearest wisp and telekinetically pulls it into the spirit guardians. It fails its strength save and wisdom save, but takes only 15 damage. Quasar charges past, turning to take 3 blasts at the visible wisp. Somehow all 3 miss. Those high ACs matter, go figure. The Geist pops out of the ground, it uses its telekinetic thrust on Quasar and rolls a nat 20 charisma check. Quasar buckles down, and Chris rolls a natural 20 right back at him. Quasar is somehow able to resist the pull of the invisible spirit. The Geist, dejected, retreats, knowing that if it survives the encounter, it'll never hear the end of it from its poltergeist buddies. It sinks into the ground, taking 9 more damage. Round 4 The Expert uses the help action against the Wisp and attacks, missing with an 18. The Wisp's turn, the first makes a wisdom save and fails. It's crushed by the spirits into a single black speck, dead. The final Wisp flies into the galactic mist, fails its save, takes 15 damage. It fails its con save to maintain concentration and loses invisibility. Despite that, it's still able to shock the expert for 4 damage. The warrior scoots around the warhorse to get to the Wisp where he takes a big swing and shatters the glowing globe. Quasar rushes to the last known sound of the final enemy and just waits. The moment it pops its invisible head out of the ground, Quasar destroys it with Eldritch Blasts. The MVP of this map was certainly the Warhorse in the Fine Steed spell. Movement, when used correctly and with the appropriate maps, can be an incredibly powerful tool. Having taken almost no damage and with only a level 5 slot expended, the party struts through the remainder of the catacombs, reaching the path that winds its way to the Stone Temple's wooden doors. And yes, for those who have seen the new Gauntlet run, this is a new temple map. The old one was, it was just too big. Some of the environmental details were unclear, so moving forward, the gauntlet will use this one. Back to the encounter, Quasar decides to hold back a casting of spirit guardians before entering the temple. With his knowledge of the priests inside the place of worship, priests can dispel magic, and spirit guardians is no good to you if it gets dispelled on round one. As we did on map one, with no spirit guardians up, we roll initiative. The warrior leads the way with the expert right behind, again. Quasar, on the other hand, rolls a nat 1, which puts him all the way at the bottom of the initiative order. Round 1 
the warrior strides forward and dodges. The expert stays mounted on his horse and does the same. The frontline priest pushes through the double doors, casts spiritual weapon as a bonus action, and attacks the steed. A 12 misses due to the horse's barding, bringing that AC to 18. With her action, the priest dodges. The northernmost priest breaks through the window to get a line of sight on the intruders. She casts Guiding Bolt on the mount. Knowing full well the danger of a mounted combatant, the Guiding Bolt lands and deals 13 radiant damage as she hops back inside the temple for cover. The remaining two priests creep ahead, ducking behind the pews and casting Sanctuary on each other, and then dodging. The first four veterans peek outside and take crossbow shots at the largest target, the horse. All missing, even with the first vet's advantage from Guiding Bolt. They duck back inside the temple with their remaining movement. The final vet dashes ahead 60 feet. The clay golem lumbers out of the stairwell. Quasar's turn. He prods the horse around the outskirts of the temple, stopping briefly to fire three eldritch blasts at the priest, killing her. He then pushes around the stone outcropping to find some cover and stay out of the veteran's reach. Round two. The warrior rushes to keep pace with his allies. Unable to use the aggressive feature because he lacks line of sight on any enemies, he simply dodges with his action. Not wanting to leave the mount, the Kenku dodges and stays put. The western priest moves her spiritual weapon, which cannot keep pace with the orc. Spiritual weapon is not very strong. Then all three members of the clergy duck behind pews and ready sacred flame attacks at a target they can see. You may ask why the orc cannot be targeted behind the glass. Despite the glass being transparent, it does not allow for a clear path to the target. The veterans attempt to swarm the allies. Two are able to get in range to take crossbow shots at the warhorse. One hits for eight damage, the remaining three vets dash and try to use cover to their advantage. The clay golem continues to mosey on over. Quasar lets loose all the blasts on the veteran, hitting with all three and dealing 41 damage. The horse then dashes 120 feet away from the veterans. I think you see how this is going. Round three. The warrior bonus action charges toward the lone veteran, then attacks twice with his great axe. Both land for respectable 30 damage. The priest turn. On the western front, the priest moves her spiritual weapon for an attack, and sacred flames the warrior for her action. Both miss. The remaining two priests head to the southern portion of the temple to head off the retreating quasar. The western veteran drops his crossbow and unsheaths the longsword to make two attacks at the orc warrior. One strike lands, dealing eight damage. With no short sword in hand, the vet is unable to make a third attack. Another vet dashes toward the southern wall as the plan to pin down the mobile quasar is fully underway. The remaining three vets hold their ground and dodge. The clay golem bursts through the window, Kool-Aid man style, and dashes the quasar, but with no actions left, Quasar has his horse disengage and blasts the golem with three eldritch blasts, all hitting for 46 damage. Now at 60 feet away, the golem has very little chance of catching the speedy horse. Round four. On the other side of the map, the orc bonus action aggresses right at the priest, provoking opportunity attack from the veteran, which misses. The two great axe strikes on the priest both land, but it barely survives. Using the remainder of his movement, the warrior moves past the priest, who also takes an opportunity attack. This one landing! The priest expends a third level slot on Divine Eminence for an additional 5d6 damage on top of the mace's base damage. This ability requires a bonus action to activate, but nonetheless deals 18 damage to the warrior. The expert uses an action to drink a potion of healing to recover five hit points, all the way up to 68. The western priest casts Spirit Guardians, here we go, and engulfs the warrior in her radiant energy. The remaining two push outside and dodge. The veterans reposition themselves as well. Operation Box in Quasar continues. The clay golem dashes, making it a target for Quasar, who rocks it with three Eldritch Blasts for 43 damage. The steed then retreats and breaks through the window to get inside the temple. A quick note on tactics. For those planning on DMing this gauntlet, and anyone who wants to should go join the Discord and try, remember that the player needs to stop the Mind Flare, and this necessitates that they enter the temple and move to the final map after this one. It is the priests, veterans, and golems job to stop the player from doing so. If the player wants to run around the temple picking off enemies from range, there's absolutely no reason to go outside enabling that plan. Hunker down, guard the steps, and make the player come to you. Of course, I say that having watched the encounter and seeing how it played out, and with hindsight 2020, but I think it's important to note. And to Chris's credit, if he would have just cast Spirit Guardians, went inside the temple, and had the priest dispel that Spirit Guardians the moment he walked through the door, he would have been swarmed by the vets and the priest's own Spirit Guardians. And even if they didn't finish him off, they would have bought the golem enough time to get into melee and finish the job. Instead, he did just the opposite, drew out and split up the enemies, whose only chance was to box him in at that point. If you're not going to fall back, you have to cut him off from all angles. Round five. 
The warrior starts his turn in the Spirit Guardians. A bit of a roll reversal here. He fails and takes 10 Radiant. He slides around the vet to attack the priest without provoking an opportunity attack, hitting easily and dealing 18 damage, enough to kill the priest and shut off the Spirit Guardians. The orc turns around and attacks the veteran with his final attack, and that one auto misses, so the warrior slides around the vet before finishing his turn. The expert, enjoying his ride, dodges. Again. The priest shuffle positioning and dodge. The western vet decides to go 1v1 against the orc, attacking twice and missing both. He holds his ground. The northern vet shifts over to the window, readying an attack for when the glass breaks and they have a clear path to Quasar. The golem should be able to facilitate that. The final two vets reposition themselves, one readying a crossbow attack, the southern one dashing to protect the priest. The golem moves toward the nearest window and smashes it with his action. This triggers the readied actions, but both crossbow attacks miss the dodging warhorse. Quasar's turn and he shoots the injured vet with two blasts, killing him, then uses the final EB to do 10 damage to the other vet. The horse leaps through the broken window and canters to the south. The warrior finishes off the veteran with two more attacks and 31 combined damage. The expert does what the expert does, dodge, turn over. Both priests move closer to Quasar. The eastern priest fires a guiding bullet at Quasar, the only enemy target not dodging at the moment. It misses Quasar due to his 20 AC. The remaining priest joins the party and dodges. The three veterans converge on Quasar, two taking shots at the warhorse, both missing, and the final one dashing to get in place. Quasar takes three Eldritch Blast shots at the priest, all three hit. The final blast landing at exactly the AC and damage needed to take the priest out for good. The horse then retreats, and to kick off, the assassin and winter wolf reappear on the steps to the final map and join the initiative order. The warrior moves to rejoin the battle and dodges. In a stunning turn of events, the Kenku decides to dismount the horse and use his remaining movement and a bonus action, cunning action dash to reach the door and hold it shut, trapping the war horse and assassin. The priest slides over and lets loose a guiding bolt at Quasar, which misses. The veterans slide ahead to get crossbow shots on Quasar, but they also clang off Quasar's armor. The third moves closer and hits for all of two damage. The assassin readies in action to attack as the Winter Wolf dashes around the corner to get to the heroes. Despite having multi-attack, like extra attack, it only applies on the creature's own turn, so the assassin gets a single short sword attack with advantage from assassinate, which lands. Quasar's con save versus the poison succeeds, so he only takes half of the 31 damage for a total of 30 piercing and poison damage. This is a third of Quasar's 90 hit points. So that was a significant blow. The clay golem lumbers toward the intruders for the first time in this battle. Chris starts to get a bit worried about making it past this map. In game, Quasar begins to question his ability to escape the enemies that are quickly closing in. In a bit of inspired play, the warhorse moves five feet down not provoking any opportunity attacks, but allowing Quasar to shift one square over on the horse, which does bait an opportunity attack from the wolf. Here's the thing, because of the steed's movement, the assassin is not within five feet of Quasar, and therefore pack tactics isn't triggered for the winter wolf. It does indeed miss, and Quasar, now out of melee, is able to Eldritch Blast the priest, dropping her. The horse then trots off as the assassin is unable to use a powerful opportunity attack, due to the ready action, using up a reaction. Once clear of the danger, Quasar, who has only cast the cantrip this turn, uses a bonus action to cast Sanctuary on himself, which due to the Fine Steed spell affects the war horse as well. The horse then dashes to increase the distance. What a turn. The warrior does the same and the Kenku opens the door and flees to the next level. I hope for his sake, there's nothing waiting for him at the bottom of those stairs. At this point, we're gonna fast forward a bit as Quasar maintains a safe distance from the enemies, blasting them from range, pulling the assassin off the Winter Wolf with Grasp of Hadar to slow its ability to chase, and moving around the outskirts of the temple. He eventually casts a fourth level Spirit Guardians as the threats from the assassin and Winter Wolf are eliminated. Once Spirit Guardians is up, Quasar moves inside the temple and uses the combo to Eldritch Blast and pull the vets into the Radiant Cosmic Swirl, eliminating them from the battlefield. And after 14 rounds of combat, some of which were touch and go there, Quasar clears the first level of the temple and prepares for the final combat with the Arcanist and its minions. Luckily for Quasar, the next temple level is close enough to keep Spirit Guardians up between combats, so those concerns about expending too many resources, combat to combat, have momentarily been assuaged. Taking a moment to collect themselves, Quasar lays on hands for 29 points of healing to himself, and the warrior uses Second Wind to heal 21 hit points. 
As they ready themselves to move down to the final level, Quasar casts Sanctuary on himself, which applies to the Steed as well. The allies move on to the final floor of the temple, Quasar with 79 hit points, the warrior with 99, and the expert with 68. Roll initiative. The sidekicks roll well, but so does Team Monster. Quasar pulls up the rear again. Round one. The expert readies an action to use the help action when an enemy moves within range. He then shifts on the horse. The mage casts greater invisibility on herself and slides 30 feet south. At this point, the mage is out of visible and audible range, yet her position is still known to the heroes because she's not hidden. The priest's turn, the last line of defense for the arcanist. The first priest casts spirit guardians and pushes up against the large wooden doors. The second priest moves into the protection of the spirit guardians and casts sanctuary on herself. The warrior darts out into the opposing wall and dodges. The arcanist continues to perform the ritual. He's counting on the minions to stop the heroes, so the mind flayer has no need to pause the ritual to join the fight. Only time will tell if that remains the case. The golem stomps to the other side of the hall and dodges. Quasar spurs the steed into the hall, which triggers the Kenku's helpful action on the golem, but Quasar attacks the mage with three blasts, which is enough to deal 20 damage and force the mage to lose concentration on the greater invisibility spell as she fails the con check miserably. The flame skulls float over and dodge. Round two, the expert, guess what, dodges. The mage casts fly on herself and uses the extra movement to enter the pool room because it's never the wrong time for a dip. The priest nearest the doors bashes them open and readies to spell magic while the second priest rushes out and dodges with sanctuary still up. Not wanting to enter line of sight of the priests, Quasar's steed trots just far enough to get a shot on the golem. With spirit guardians up and despite half cover, Quasar hits with Eldritch Blast and pulls the golem into the galactic nucleus with Grasp of Hadar and another 5 feet with the Crusher feet. This removes cover from the golem, giving Quasar a clear shot for the final two Eldritch Blasts, one of which hits for 7 damage. The horse then dashes to get Quasar and the Expert behind cover. The Flame Skulls continue to float ahead, this time casting Blur on themselves to shore up their defenses. Round 3. The Expert takes out some tea, has a sip, and dodges. With a careful eye on how things are playing out in front of her eyes, the mage flies the full 60 feet just far enough to drop a fireball at the orc's feet. The blast spreads around the corners of the wall and reaches the mount. Due to the area of effect of the spell, it also bypasses the sanctuary spell on the horse who fails its deck save, taking the full 26 damage. It's difficult to say whether the quasar combo or the fine steed spell are the MVP of the Scotland run, but an argument can certainly be made either way. That steed did work but the steed is no more. The warrior who succeeds on the save only takes 13 damage. Now, unlike the phantom steed spell, the fine steed spell has no clause about fading after it dies. It simply disappears. With a reaction, you can fall on your feet, but without that reaction, you will fall prone within five feet of the horse. Here, both Quasar and the expert land on their feet. The two priests slide forward and both dodge. The rear priest uses her bonus action to cast sanctuary on the mage, further fortifying the home team's defenses. The warrior pulls back, bunkers down, and dodges. Seeing no reason to pause the ritual, the arcanist continues working and passes its turn. The golem marches forward and joins the dodge party. Quasar stretches out those stiff legs from riding the steed this whole time and darts to the south to get the best possible angle on the golem. At disadvantage, the first shot misses, but the second lands, dealing 19 damage with the Dao Warlock's bludgeoning damage. Using the crusher feet, Quasar shifts the golem five feet down in front of the door, Hoping to land another blast, but with disadvantage from the dodge action, he can't manage to land that final blow. But wait! With his bonus action, Quasar tries to telekinetically pull the golem through the doorway. It's strong, and with a 22 strength and plus 6 mod, it's able to make the save and resist the gravitational force of our hero. Out of tricks, he passes the turn. The flame skulls whip around the corner and drop fireballs at the base of the door, engulfing Quasar and the warrior, along with the stone golem. Friendly fire be damned! The orc and golem succeed on their deck saves, but Quasar fails, taking the full 21 for the first fireball. All three make their saves on the second fireball, absorbing an additional 13 fire damage. That knocks Quasar all the way down to 45 hit points. Round 4. The Kenku, pissed that he spilled his tea, decides it's time to take some action. He scuttles down to get a shot at the golem through the door, which misses. He's out of practice. He then uses a bonus action to dash away to safety. The mage drops another fireball, this one at fourth level, at the foot of the door. The golem fails, but Quasar and the orc both save, taking half of the 27 damage. Quasar's down to 32 hit points. The non-spirit guardian's priest stalks down the hall, spots the spirit guardian swirling in the sleeping quarters, and casts the spell magic at third level. A DC 14 ability check is easily surpassed by a roll of 22. 
The Spirit Guardians is down. Not good. The second priest slides over, dodges, and casts Sanctuary on the Golem. The warrior darts out of the room into the hallway and aggressively rushes around the golem, trying to draw out an opportunity attack to break the construct sanctuary spell, which it does. Unfortunately, the attack lands and it's a critical. Uh -oh. 39 bludgeoning damage drops the orc all the way down to 11 hit points. The wheels are falling off at this point. The warrior does get two attacks on the golem, now it's in sanctuary. Both attacks land for 30 slashing. The golem, head spinning from the glut of attacks, charges Quasar and makes those two attacks, missing both. Quasar doesn't have much choice but to back up and provoke an opportunity attack. He takes a step back, the golem swings, and it's another critical with 32 hit points left. There's not a lot of margin of error here. And the golem rolls 46 damage. Quasar is down. The flame skulls are up next. Seeing the unconscious Quasar, the floating heads let loose a torrent of magic missiles, peppering his body with the darts of magical force, like nuke and barb before him. Quasar has failed to...